G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as the off-season wears on. Now, as you know, I've been working through some off-season series uh, club by club, but I thought I'd mix it up a little bit today with a bit of a different video. And this one's a little bit more of a creative exercise than anything strictly analytical. So uh, what is the premise of this video? I realize not everyone here is uh, is West Australian, so uh, it might not be interesting to everybody. However, I am West Australian. My father was West Australian, and he grew up loving the waffle, in particular the Perth Demons how the mighty have fallen. But back in the day, obviously before the VFL expanded to become the AFL, uh, we, were, we had all these different state leagues existing. And uh, my dad assures me that back in the day, the Waffle used to sell out games and everyone you know, loved their local team. And it was a really cool experience. And that kind of got me thinking, you know, what if the VFL had never become the AFL? And what if we still existed in a world where all these different state leagues uh, we're running simultaneously and all the best local talent played um, in their home state. Now, I will say as an aside, I am aware that back in the day, a lot of players from WA, a lot of the better ones, would go play in Victoria because it was a better standard of league. I'm aware of that. However, I just thought, well, let's do a hypothetical exercise. Let's say if the AFL doesn't exist in the way it does now, and the waffle was still comprised of some of the best WA talent going, uh, what would the league look like? And uh, that's what I've gone ahead and done, and I've made a best 22 for every waffle team that there is, comprised of players uh, that were drafted from that club. So I will uh, highlight a few things as well. Like I've kept a couple of players in here that were drafted from WA that are kind of not really from WA. Two clear examples, Tom Mitchell, um, who now lives and plays in Victoria, obviously. Uh, his father was Barry Mitchell, but he was actually living in WA when he was drafted. So he's available to Claremont in this particular video. Same thing with Charlie Cameron. I don't think he really is Western Australian, but he was drafted out of the Swan Districts and therefore I'm going to include him in this video. So like I said, I've gone through the nine teams. Uh, I've included Peel Thunder. Uh, I haven't included the West Coast Reserves, obviously. Uh, and I've filled them with players from their original club. And I have, to flesh it out, included the retirements and the listings from 2023 as well. Because, um, you know, I, you can't actually fill out 22s for the entire um, waffle because there just aren't enough players from WA to fill out nine teams completely. Now, for those teams that I couldn't fill out completely, I've left the spots blank because uh, I'm going to be completely honest, I don't follow the waffle enough to be able to map out each team's best 22 and backfill uh, the best waffle players in to fill out these teams. That would have been a better video probably, but this will be just mapping out which AFL players belong to which club. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the nine clubs alphabetically, show you the quick best 22 of each club or best eight in some cases. And then at the end, I'm gonna do a, a rough predicted ladder and look at which teams would be the best if this was the case. Before I crack into it, uh, I appreciate all the support lately. It was fantastic to hit 25,000 subscribers before the end of the year. That was an audacious goal that I set and uh, we managed to hit it. So thank you very much. Um, again, if you are not subscribed to the channel currently and you love your footy, this would be a great channel to subscribe to. And if you're unaware as well, we have opened up uh, channel memberships as well for the first time, which you can uh, check out by hitting the join button and see what is on offer there. But anyway, let's crack into this Waffle League. So let's start with Claremont. We'll go alphabetically. And this was uh, challenging, or well, kind of easy in a sense, but there are more than 22 players from Claremont. Um, a huge concentration of WA footy talent has been drafted out of Claremont. So I've had a rough crack at their best 22 or so. Um, so we'll go through it in line by line. First of all, that spine's looking pretty solid. You've got Barassa McGovern from West Coast. You've got Daniel Curtin and Mitch McGovern as kind of third talls. Will Powell, Joe Fonte was just drafted to GWS. The wings include uh, Jordan Clark and Liam Henry. Forward line, you know, Van Royen and Jesse Hogan, um, you know, for the purposes of this league is very strong. Darcy Cameron is the second tall. Uh, I've got him, you know, I got Jamison in the ruck over Jam uh, Cameron because I think Cameron can play forward better than Jamison can, not because I rate him higher. There's Waterman in there. There's Guelph. Look at that bench. There's nine players on the bench because I just couldn't fit them all in. But you, you've got another tall back option on the bench there in Joel Hamling as well. So there is depth to this team and Jack Martin's in there. So to start off, uh, I happen to show you the strongest team first. And so without context, you don't really appreciate maybe how good this team is yet. So we'll cycle through some of the rest of the teams now. So I'll go through to East Fremantle. Again, going alphabetically here. And I've got a few gaps there. I could only find one legitimate tall defender. And even Troy Rusco is probably not a true key positional player. But other than that, the, the medium types are good. You've got Trent Rivers in this team. You've got Judd McVee and Brandon Walker uh, and Caleb Smith from Richmond as well. But the midfield, I think, is the, the strong point of this team. Elliot Yo and Patrick Cripps, a couple of big bodies, David Swallow uh, and the Warner brothers on each wing. I know Chad isn't really a wingman um, and he could easily oust one of the other players for a starting spot there, but 
Overall, I think East Fremantle's midfield would compete pretty well with that Claremont midfield. Um, the ruck situation is pretty strong with Luke Jackson as well and Jack Williams from West Coast in that team as well. So uh, again, a few unproven types, a little bit younger, but then the top end of that team is really strong. So let's talk about East Perth. And that, now you can see that the, these teams are getting a little bit weaker, uh, but there is still some pretty strong talent. Uh, if you look at it, it's bookended by a couple of first round draft picks in Buzzlinger and Jai Amos. It's a pretty young team. You've got Sabit Kuek, who uh, hasn't played a game for Fremantle, but he's on their list. Xavier Walsh was just key, uh, rookie listed, sorry, by Port Adelaide. Mitch Duncan as the resident um, veteran in this team. Ruben Jinby is probably the highest rated midfield there. So the midfield's a little bit weak with Tunstall and maybe Pal Pepper, who's probably more of a forward at AFL level. Uh, and Starsevic is a very good halfback flank there. So you can see it's not a, not a massively deep team, but there's still some talent from East Perth there. Then you got the Peel Thunder, who are the newest uh, uh, waffle team, and they didn't exist back in my dad's day. But uh, you can see that they have actually produced a fair bit of talent uh, from that Peel region, and, and some of the southwest is represented as well. Um, so you can see the spine is there; there is pretty complete. Uh, some of it's a bit of a mixed bag. So Sandy Brock and Jed Adams, I'm pretty sure both haven't played for their respective clubs at AFL level. Neither has Reese Torrent, who I've got in the centre there. He was just drafted to the Brisbane Lions. Josh Draper as well has not played an AFL game. But then you've got Aaron Norton. So that's a pretty pretty top-end talent there, I would say. And Wade Dirksen, another player that hasn't played. So produced a lot of young talent recently. Uh, Brady Hoff looks like a pretty quality player, um, if I do say so myself. Nathan Wilson, again, just been delisted, but I, I'm going to include delisted players in this. Uh, Camden McIntosh, and then Clay Hall, Izzy Winder. So pretty young and raw. So I guess the story we learned from that is that, you know, Peel's only just really started producing top-end talent, uh, in particular Aaron Norton, um, who's probably the biggest example of top-end talent on this team. Now we'll talk about my mighty Perth Demons, the team that I inherited from my dad. Thanks again for that. Uh, because the Perth Demons have been really unsuccessful since my dad's era. Uh, and as you can see here, it's, a, it's an interesting balance of, uh, of players here. Uh, there is some quality talent. Like Logan, Logan McDonald is the clear best player in this team. Uh, followed by maybe, oh, there's Jay Gramira and then Devin Robertson. Uh, oh, and Bobby Hill. Okay, so there's a bit going on there. You've got Fisher, Bobby Hill. Jaden Hunter went mid-season draft to Essendon. Don't think he's played a game. And the O'Driscoll brothers on the each wing. So it doesn't really bat very deep. So surprise, surprise, uh, when I do this ladder, you could probably see Perth somewhere down the bottom. Uh, let's talk about South Fremantle. Now, it's got some good top-end talent. You've got Tim English and Tim Kelly in the uh, in the on-ball division there. Marlene Pickett as well, sold a player for Richmond. Oh, and Shy Bolton as well. Again, another real top-end talent. Steely Green hasn't played a game yet for Richmond, but uh, he was sort of drafted as a small defender. I think he's a bit of a midfielder forward now, I'm told. Um, so you could slap him anywhere. There's pl plenty of uh, empty spots there. Archie's in this team on a back flank. Jesse Motlop as a small forward. So it's actually not a bad team. Uh, overall, it's just there's not that many players, but the players they do have, I'm pretty pretty confident about. Then we're up to Subiaco. They are a, a, an actual powerhouse these days. Maybe not the last year or two, but they have historically been a powerhouse as much as I've been watching uh, Waffles for the last 20 years or so. And they do produce a fair bit of talent. So in the back line, you've got the recently delisted Foley and then, of course, Liam Baker. The midfield is fairly decent. Dom Sheed, um, again, he's missed a lot of footy lately, but obviously a, a pretty decent AFL player. Neil Erasmus, a prospect. Greg Clark, another one just delisted. Matt Johnson, and then, of course, Nick Martin, who's probably the best player out of that lot. But the forward line, that was actually too much forward line talent to fit into this team. Uh, Liam Ryan's in there. Colton Falstrup was just taken in the first round. Georgie Artis. Uh, then there's Lance Collard, Robert Hansen, and Tyrell Dewar. Um, now, I, I, now I think about it, Lance Collard should probably be on the field instead of Tyrell Dewar. A uh, bit of an oversight there, but you get the point there. Again, another solid team. We couldn't flesh out the entire team, but you'd probably imagine that it wouldn't be the one of the absolute powerhouses of the Waffle if the uh, AFL didn't exist. That being said, I know that's ignorant because uh, with the AFL existing, Subiaco did produce a whole heap of talent, uh, but I just meant it for the purposes of this video. Now, let's talk about the Swan Districts. Now, they have actually produced quite a lot of AFL players or at least currently listed AFL players uh, as you can see there a very tall back line you got Sam Taylor one of the best key backs in the business and then there's also like Griffin Logue uh, Nathan Broad and then a couple of West Coast Eagles key backs in Rhett Bazo and Harry Edwards so it's a very tall team uh, but I was just trying to cram everyone in there uh, the midfield, you've got Cornelio, you've got Elijah Hewitt, Riley Hardeman. I've pushed up to a flank, uh, sorry, from a flank to a to a wing spot. So it's a, it's an okay midfield there. Uh, the forward line, again, I've, I've uh, given them Charlie Cameron, even though he'd probably be playing in Queensland or, or the VFL in, in reality. Granger Barras makes his team as a, as a centre-half forward with Rory Lobb. 
up there as well. And Nick Natanui, again, in real life, he has no Achilles. So I don't think he would actually be playing, but uh, it would be, he'd certainly sell a lot of tickets if, uh, if he was playing for Swan Districts, that's for sure. And finally, the last team to mention alphabetically before I give you the overall ladder, uh, we've got West Perth, who had no trouble filling out a spine. Uh, if you look at the forward line there, Oscar Allen and Jack Darling is a compar- comparatively a very strong waffle forward line. Uh, midfielder less so, Connor West was just listed by West Coast. Blake Akers and Brad Hill are good players, though. And Jackson Pryor is a, is a decent prospect there for the Brisbane Lions. Marcus Adams, again, I'm assuming he's not retired uh, due to concussion or anything like that. And Josh Rother makes his team. Heath Chapman is actually a good player. Uh, so there's, there's a, a bit of a diversity of talent there, uh, but a very fleshed out spine, you'd say, as well. So with that all being said, I'm going to give you my rough ladder for how I, I would rank these teams. So first of all, we've got Claremont, who had the most players. No surprise there. Followed by the Swan Districts, who, um, the Swan Districts. Followed by Swan Districts, who had uh, the, probably the next most amount of players. I suppose there's a clear relationship there. East Fremantle, who just won the Waffle Premiership, would probably be my third pick, followed by Subi and South Fremantle. And then you see down the bottom here, in particular, uh, you've got the, the two Perths, West and East, but then you've got the two perennial teams that used to finish uh, last and second last before the alignment of uh, Fremantle and Peel. Uh, Peel used to always finish last along with Perth. So not much has changed from that respect. So overall, guys, that was just a bit of a fun, creative video. You could see what the waffle would look like um, if it didn't exist. You know, if I'd made this video a year earlier, Buddy Franklin, actually, I should have included Buddy Franklin. He just retired, damn it. (laughs) Either way, I'd probably have Perth last in this scenario anyway. But uh, yeah, again, just a little bit of creative fun. Um, I just thought that would be interesting to map out what the league would look like. But let me know in the comments anything I've missed or uh, or what you, how you think these teams would go. Anyway, guys, hope you're enjoying the content. I hope you're having a good Christmas period. I haven't decided whether this video comes out before or after Christmas yet. I think it'll be before. So if it is before, I have a great Christmas and I appreciate your support on the channel. So thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.